In old Babylon, there once lived a very rich man named Arkad. Far and wide, he was famed for his great wealth. You, Arkad, are more fortunate than we. You have become the richest man in Babylon while we struggle for existence. You can wear the finest garments and you can enjoy the rarest foods, while we must be content if we can clothe our families in raiment that is presentable and feed them as best we can. Yet we were once equal. We studied under the same master, we played in the same games, and in neither the studies nor the games did you outshine us. And in the years since, you have been no more an honorable citizen than we. Why then should a fickle fate single you out to enjoy all the good things of life and ignore us who are equally deserving? Yes, I understand your questions. If you had not acquired more than a bare existence in the years since we were youths, it's because you either have failed to learn the laws that govern the building of wealth, or else you do not observe them. In my youth, I looked about me and saw all the good things there were to bring happiness and contentment, and I realized that wealth increased the potency of all of these. With wealth, many things are possible. One may ornament the house with the richest of furnishings. One may sail the distant seas. One may feast on the delicacies of far lands. One may buy the ornaments of the gold worker and the stone polisher. One may even build mighty temples for the gods. One may do all of these things and many others in which there is delight for the senses and gratification for the soul. And when I realized all this, I declared to myself that I would claim my share of the good things in life. Being, as you know, the son of a humble merchant and not being endowed with superior powers or wisdom, I decided that if I were to achieve what I desired, time and study would be required. Therefore, I decided to find out how one might accumulate wealth and to make this my task and do it well. Arkad found employment as a scribe in the Hall of Records, and long hours each day he labored upon the clay tablets. Week after week and month after month he labored, yet for his earnings he had nothing to show. Food and clothing and penance to the gods and other things of which he could remember not what absorbed all his earnings, but his determination did not leave him. And one day, Algamish, the investment advisor, came to the house of the city master and ordered a copy of the Ninth Law. I must have this in two days, and if the task is done by that time, I will give you two coppers. So Arkad labored hard, but the Ninth Law was long, and when Algamish returned, the task was unfinished. Algamish was angry. Algamish, you are a very rich man. Please tell me, how may I also become rich? And all night I will carve upon the clay, and when the sun rises, it shall be completed. You are a forward knave, but we will call it a bargain. All that night, Arkad carved, though his back pained and the smell of the wick made his head ache until his eyes could hardly see. And when Algamish returned in the morning, the tablets were complete. Now tell me what you promised. I found the road to wealth when I decided that a part of all I earned was mine to keep, and so will you. Is that all? That was sufficient to change the heart of a sheep herder into the heart of an investment advisor. But all I earn is mine to keep, is it not? Oh, far from it. Do you not pay the garment maker? Do you not pay the sandal maker? Do you not pay for the things you eat? What have you to show for your earnings for the past month or the past year? Fool, you pay everyone but yourself. If you did keep for yourself one-tenth of all you earn, how much would you have after 10 years? As much as I earned in one year. You speak but half the truth. Every gold piece you save is a worker to work for you. Every copper it earns is its child that can also earn for you. If you are to become wealthy, 
then what you save must earn, and its children must earn, and its children's children must earn, that all may help to give you the abundance you crave. You think I cheat you for your long night's work, but I am paying you thousand times over if you have the intelligence to grasp the truth I offer you. A part of all you earn is yours to keep. It should not be less than a tenth, no matter how little you earn. It can be much more as you can afford. Pay yourself first. Wealth, like a tree, grows from a tiny seed. The first copper you save is the seed from which your tree of wealth shall grow. The sooner you plant that seed, the sooner shall the tree grow, and the more faithfully you nourish and water that tree with consistent savings, the sooner you may bask in the contentment beneath its shade. A twelfth month after Algamish had gone, he again returned. Arkad, have you paid to yourself not less than one-tenth of all that you have earned over the past year? Yes, Master, I have. Oh, and what have you done with it? I have given it to Azmur, the brickmaker, who told me he was traveling over the far seas where he could buy for me the rare jewels of the Phoenicians. When he returns, we shall sell these at high prices and divide the earnings. Oh, every fool must learn. But why trust the knowledge of a brickmaker about jewels? Would you go to the breadmaker to inquire about the stars? No, you would go to the astrologer, if you had the power to think. Your savings are all gone. Youth, you have jerked your wealth tree up by the roots. But plant another. Try again. And next time, if you need advice about jewels, go to the jewel merchant. If you want the truth about sheep, go to the herdsman. Advice is one thing that is freely given away, but watch that you take only what is worth having. He who takes advice about his savings from one who is inexperienced in such matters shall pay with his savings, thereby proving the falsity of such opinions. Arkad did not see Algamish for two years, when he once more returned and his face was full of deep lines and his eyes drooped, for he was becoming a little older. Arkad, hast thou yet achieved the wealth thou dreamed of? Not yet all that I desire, but some I have, and it earns more, and its earnings earn more. And do you still take the advice of the brickmakers? About brickmaking, they give good advice. Oh, Arkad, you have learned your lessons well. You first learned to live upon less than you could earn. Next, you learned to seek advice from those who were knowledgeable and competent to give it. And lastly, you have learned to make gold work for you. I am becoming an older man. My sons think of spending and give no thought to earning. My interests are great and I fear too much for me to look after. If you will go to Nippur and look after my lands, I shall make you my partner, and you shall share in my estate." So Arkad went to Nippur and took charge of Algamish's holdings, which were large. So he prospered much, and when the spirit of Algamish departed for the sphere of darkness, Arkad did share in his estate, as Algamish had arranged under the law. What then do you advise us to do, that we may also become rich? The years have passed, and we are no longer young women and men, and we have nothing put by. I advise that you take the wisdom of Algamish, and say to yourselves, a part of all I earn is mine to keep. Say it in the morning when you first arise. Say it at noon. Say it at night. Say it each hour of the day. Say it to yourself until the words stand out like letters of fire across the sky. Impress yourself with the idea. Fill yourself with the thought. Then take whatever portion seems wise. Let it not be less than one-tenth and invest it for the long term 
in a low-cost, diversified way. Arrange your expenditures to do this if necessary, but lay aside that portion first. Soon you will realize what a rich feeling it is to have something upon which you alone have claimed. Then learn to make your treasure work for you. Make its children and its children's children work for you. Ensure income for thy future. Look thou at the aged and forget not that in the days to come thou also will be numbered among them. Therefore invest thy treasure with greatest caution that it not be lost. Unusually high rates of return are deceitful sirens that sing to lure the unwary upon the rocks of loss and remorse. Counsel with wise men. Seek the advice of advisors whose daily work is handling money. Let them save you from such an error as myself made in entrusting my money to the judgment of Osmur, the brickmaker. A fair return for the risk taken should be your goal. The turning point in these men's and women's lives came upon that day when they realized the truth that had come from Algamish to Arkad and from Arkad to them. A part of all you earn is yours to keep.